Be careful what y'all entertaining out there because you want to please him so bad that now you like, it's your birthday. I want you to feel good. Let's go to the strip club. Okay. Oh, y'all yeah. don't smile in here. My bad. Yeah. I, I thought this was about Jesus. I thought we was yeah. about to <laughs> worship together and like talk about the yeah. Heavenly Father. And so I'll, I'll yeah. let you have a credit card. So let you <clears throat> let you go do what you need to do a little bit. Uh, it was. It was <laughs> No, don't get it wrong. She had a limit on it. Well, he paid for my nails. He immediately bought me a new phone, bought me some Beats headphones. Like, you was going hard in the paint a little bit. Well, but, like, as far as me there. just swiping your card, I was not. And I was, yeah. driving, I was driving your card, too, though. You was driving my card. So That's crazy. Too. You, you yeah. was tripping, babe. I, I was. I was like, boy, she had me. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I was, yeah, she had me gone. Yeah. I get agitated about worship, especially yeah. for me. Get your butt up to the front. Put your hands up. I'm sorry. I get, hey, let's go. We talking about he died for us. We should be dead in his place. Instead, he took ours. This is an Iwebu production. Period. Hello, everyone. My name is TK. And my name is Namdi. And you are Pillow, Pillow talking, talking with, with the Iwebus. Yes, yes. yes, welcome. Come on in. Come in. We so appreciate you pulling up and having a chat with us. Baby, you want to yeah. tell them what we are all about? Yes, yeah, so we motivate the common couple to become extraordinary and for singles to receive God's best in relationships. So yes. if you're in a relationship, you about to get in a relationship, just left a bad relationship, okay. <laughs> whatever it is. All of it. Hey, listen, we all deal with relationships. I believe you. You are actually in the right place, and I hope that you get some value today out of this video and podcast. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, go ahead and click that like button. It's yes. free. Go ahead and subscribe, y'all. We are on our way to a thousand subscribers. Man. I think we're at like nine twenty four. So yes. y'all share share this stuff with your people. Um, there's a lot of not so good <laughs> content going yeah. around with just relationship and i just see i'm so sad babe when i'm scrolling yeah. sometimes like just how women are talking about men and how men are talking about women i'm just like yeah. the division is so real and so yeah. we come to unify we come to edify we come, we come to uplift as much as we can and help as much as we can not from a place of perfection not but a place all. of a lot of mistakes and don't want you to go through the same thing yeah. so we're gonna jump right into our conversations today babe. Maybe you want to let them know what we're talking about? Yes. So, want to jump right into it. Recently, a uh, well-known artist, hip-hop artist, Chance the Rapper, was out in Jamaica for mm. Carnival. And uh, he was kind of getting it, you know, getting it in. He was on. He was. Uh, What's he getting was, it in? He was getting it in. He was videoed with a, a woman who was dang near naked. Yeah. Okay. She, you know, twerking on him. Mm. And actually, he went ahead and. Made a slap at that booty, too. Uh, I was just like, wow. Uh, babe, I just wanted to ask you, as someone who's married, he's also known as a Christian, uh, do you believe that this is appropriate? I've seen a lot of different takes on it. Yeah. But you think this is okay? Even if his wife was there? We don't know. She wasn't in it. She didn't What do you anything. think about this? Yeah. I, so Chance the Rapper, I think, has been labeled as a christian hip-hop artist right yes yes so he's been labeled as a christian hip-hop artist i think because he said like god in a few of his lyrics <laughs> well, no i'm not trying to be funny he yeah, Do, yeah i don't does he claim himself to be that oh yeah oh he does oh yeah he grew up I believe. he claims I, himself to be a christian hip-hop artist no 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 not okay. a christian hip-hop artist but a hip-hop artist who a is a believer in jesus christ okay. yes and he and i've heard him in interviews and i will tell you he can articulate the gospel pretty like like some of the best of them okay i don't know i think i just i think i'm a little bit i don't want to use this word y'all i'm trying to get better i really am trying to get better at articulating my feelings and things yeah. because i just want to shoot straight to the get to it but i'd be a little bit annoyed a little bit um when people do proclaim these things because even with what we do like i knew the more following I got, the more influence that I got, the more eyes that were on me, the more judgment that would come. Mm -hmm. Even here recently with me saying that I am a modesty fashion coach and I'm yeah. a modesty this. Okay, now I got to be actually like modest. Yeah. Like I got to really, really be people mindful be of this. It. And so I think that I'm not, I know people are, want to, are wanting me to say like he's not a believer. I don't know what that man is. I, I'm not in his home. I'm not mm -hmm. in his walk. But what I can judge by the fruit of this, if we're talking about a God-fearing man mm -hmm. who 
is a husband who is supposed to respect and honor his wife privately and publicly. I would just say this is a bad rotten fruit. You know, like this is a this is a bad fruit to show um, to the public, especially as a public fi- figure. So I think it's just I I I have I, I really don't honestly have too much judgment because mm-hmm. I haven't seen like him like proclaiming the gospel or like representing the kingdom or like, you know, making mm-hmm. himself seem like a peculiar person, like mm-hmm. how we're supposed yeah. to be and separated from the culture. I'm mm-hmm. um, not saying that. And I just want to say this too, for my super duper holy Christians, um, because although I know a lot of people think that you ain't supposed to be in that culture at all. No, we are. We're mm-hmm. actually supposed to bring the light to the darkness. We're supposed to bring the light in the industry, bring the light yeah. in the music, uh, movies and entertainment yeah. and all of that. But just make sure when you get there, you're actually the light. And so I don't know if I've seen him do too much of a thing. And y'all can comment yeah. down below yeah. if y'all I'm probably, wrong. Y'all might know better than we I don't are. know this man at all, to be honest. <laughs> I don't follow him. I don't know his yeah. wife's name or, or not. But I think it was incredibly inappropriate. This woman was, yeah. y'all, I'm talking about just a thong. Like, a thong yeah. and, like, little things over her breast. I think we'll, we'll, we'll flash, like, a blurred image up for you guys. But... Yeah. It was, it was, it was so disrespectful to his yeah. wife and if her, and if his wife is okay with it that's a whole nother video yeah i <laughs> i was so frustrated by some of the takes i i saw this i ain't, ain't gonna lie i was from the breakfast club you know i frequent a lot of times i'm dipping in here to see what the what's going on with the culture yeah and a lot of times the reason being is because many times our media outlet is things like the breakfast club even yeah. believers right yeah. and so you can hear someone um, like Charlemagne, like Envy, uh, and they had Pretty V on there too, mm. and give a take, and that's what a lot of times we'll also go with because their media is is um, the one that's put out in front. Mm. Ours isn't like right. you know people right. aren't like getting their media from Ruslan and yeah. and Tim Ross and all Believers. these other outlets and ourselves. And so I wanted to listen, and I heard uh, a lot of oh, I mean, well. If his wife was cool with it, whatever. Like a lot of times, me and my wife go to the strip club together, and she, you know, she know whatever the case may be. And I'm just like, man, this is the problem. Like for non-believers, that's fine. Yeah, non-believers, if you're yeah. not a if Christian, non-believers gonna do, and let you them don't do care, what they do. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not a believer. We're not talking about these. Yeah, like yeah, if you're not a believer, yeah. you don't have the standards. You don't have biblical yeah. principles. Go to the strip club, have threesomes. Do y'all figure do what it you out? You do. Yeah, yeah. Do do what you do. But for those who are believers, which I have, I have heard them talk about the gospel and being saved and things of that sort. And this is just not showing at least the fruit of mm-hmm. that. I'm not saying I'm not sending them to hell. I'm not saying none of that. No. I believe he committed a sin. He definitely did. Regardless, even if his wife was there, you shouldn't be on some woman like that. But I believe it's a dangerous, uh, it's, it's dangerous grounds because you're you're treading on dangerous grounds because even if she's cool with that. Now and I got this, you know. I'm sorry. It was it, from I seen the clip and I'm like, you're touching her, mm-hmm. okay? Now this may lead to, uh, babe, what you think about us bringing another woman in this? Mm-hmm. Like this is why I say, hey, be careful what y'all entertaining out there. Yeah, ladies, be careful because y'all because you want to please him so bad mm-hmm. that now you like, uh, yeah, I go to yo. It's your birthday. I want you to feel good. Let's go to the strip club, okay? <laughs> All right. Then, then all of a sudden, you you check that phone mm. and you see that he been out here. He been out here bad. Well, you took him. You took him to the candy store and said, "Hey, get a little, just get a little bit of sample of that." And he liked what he what he got from the candy store. He like, true. Well, I know she ain't looking. I mean, she let me before, so maybe you know what I'm saying. Then he blaming on you. Well, I mean, you went with me and all. <laughs> like, I mean, I thought she was. You was cool. Now, no, now he's trying to bring in the young lady from the strip club into y'all bedroom, which is supposed to be sacred. Man, I tell you right now, y'all play with fire. You are going to get burnt. Stop messing around. And so, you know, I don't know if his wife was cool with this. Yeah. All due respect, we don't know if she was there, if she was the one holding the camera right. or anything. Right. We see a lot of stuff in the world that be like, crazy. dang, you know, mm-hmm. like I think that you you just got to tread lightly on that because you don't know what the, the fire back... Think about this. What if his wife was like, hey, I want to go to a strip club and let a man just, I mean, his stuff is covered, but he get to dance on me and all that. 
I asked, you know, for some of y'all who got men who were asking y'all to be in a political, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trading on the men this time, but hey, ladies, ladies, for some of y'all who got men who are asking y'all, hey, what you thought about us bringing somebody else in this relationship? Hmm. Uh, what you thought about us going to the strip club? I would ask you to reverse that to him. And I bet he, he would start, he would think about that mm -hmm. response because when the shoe is on the other foot, it really don't feel that good. It's like, oh, no, what you think about me bringing a uh, homeboy that we seen the other day? Buff dude, yeah. At and the gym. Yeah, in the gym. Like, how about both him. of y'all do me? Like, what you think <laughs> about that? You throw it back at him. And I just, I just would love to see what his reaction is. <laughs> when he's sitting up here boldly asking you, hey, what about the strip club for my birthday? What about going to Carnival? Um, where again, it, let me give some context to what Carnival is too for for those. It's um in the Caribbean, and this I found this off the internet. Please, I didn't know what Carnival was, knew nothing about it. In the Caribbean, the idea of Carnival, which closely mirrors what we know today, began as a celebration of, uh, amongst the enslaved Africans. While the European settlers held their own balls and celebrations from which Africans were excluded, slaves created their own means of celebrations, which included various culture, rituals, music, and dances. The rapid growth of carnival spread across eastern Caribbean um, islands such as Trinidad as a celebration of end of slavery. I, I'm, I am so tired of us taking things that were meant to celebrate us being free mm. and like for African-Americans, we got to go do some ratchet stuff. <laughs> like I know, and don't get me wrong. I've seen this from, from, you know, my white brothers and sisters too. They take different holidays and they like, cool, we going to go out here and get drunk. drunk. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Black yeah. people, we're so beautiful overall. Mm -hmm. Why for our freedom, we got to go now shake our, Plain old butt out in the street for everything. Yeah. Like, why do we have to do that? I know I'm kind of veering off from just this thing about chance, but it frustrated me when I looked at what what it actually was about. Yeah. But now, what most of you will see if you would go look up some YouTube videos or some of that, I did not look it up, but I bet you, you go look that up, you're going to find a bunch of black women. Yeah. And dang their naked, shaking their butts in the middle of the street then you wonder why some of them look at us the way that they look at us. Mm -hmm. Like, they look at us like, oh, look at them. They, like we seen the clip last week, they for the streets. when <laughs> We out there doing these type of things. So I just hate how we pervert things yeah. that, were, that were meant to be a, a, just something good and cel celebratory. We just want to pervert it and, and make it into this sexualized, overtly sexualized thing. And I, I hate yeah. that, you know, somebody like Chance got himself in the midst of all those things. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I I don't believe that this is a good look. And yeah, I bet he, he needs to tread lightly. My, and this is kind of maybe it may veer off a little bit from. No, this is okay. actually to end it. Okay. Um, there was a beautiful comment, and I I I want to call her out because I mean it was a it was a good comment. I know you wanted me to blur the name. It's, it's all good. Okay. The. I mean, it's public it, anyway, so she right put facts. the com comment if she didn't want. True. The ATL bombshell said, I actually, so she commented on a video where I was talking about how Namdi gently, so they were asking, how did I learn to be submissive? Because I was not, I was all the things that was opposite, right? And I was uh, in this interview saying, well, Namdi didn't like put the hammer down and say, shut up, get down right now, follow me, I'm the man. Uh, uh, uh. He didn't do that. He just like gently led, gently loved me and like prayed to the father and then I got convicted. And um, this woman said, the ATL bombshell said, I actually like this perspective. I like to see different types of men highlighted. We don't show this type of variation of men enough. We always see one type of man spotlighted and it distorts our perception of men in general. So to end this segment, I just want to say this is why I honor my man. All the comments, they go, are you calling him daddy? Why Ain't Jesus your daddy? Well, girl, no, I can never. This is why, because y'all can call Chris Brown and Blueface them daddy and mm -hmm. y'all can call all these men that are cheating with trash principles mm -hmm. trash morals but like there i absolutely do believe there there needs to be more praise of black men number one mm -hmm. well number one christian men mm -hmm. god-fearing men number two black men 
And so I thank you for that comment, sis. I agree. There needs to be more integral men that are leaders, that have influence, that have impact. And this is why I be saying, y'all, push us up of y'all algorithms. Yeah, because we need this to be above the the, the chance the rappers and all of that. Because some of the the artists and the people that's in the the more secular industry, that's the that's what they that's what they see as Christian. Oh, yeah. like, oh okay. That's they doing Christian. everything that everybody else do. Like, everything. Yeah. Yes. What's the, that's what's why the point? it's so strange and, when we say what we say, like boundaries. Like you had an argument with somebody that believes in the Lord. That's mm-hmm. like polygamy ain't nothing wrong with that. If that man yeah. want to leave his kids and go yeah. be with another woman, it's like yeah. What? Yeah. How does that? Is how does that align with? The, the does, what are y'all that, talking like, about? That, don't make, that does not make sense. So just more yeah. blended kids everywhere with no daddy in the yeah. home. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. They're going to come for us in the comments yeah. because somebody's going to go back to the Old Testament. We've talked about this before with a Nick Cannon video before. So if y'all want to yes, do that, but, go get some yeah. more context to, about the whole polygamy deal there. But I want to know, what do you guys think about this situation? It, it yeah. was just wild. When I saw it, I was just like, no yes. chance, no chance. Because I'm rooting for a man, especially because <laughs> he's around so many mainstream cats and he could lead them to Jesus because he's in rooms that we cannot get into. But what do y'all think about it? Let us know down in the comments below. What's up, family? We wanted to pause for just a moment to let you all know we have created a way for you guys to partner with us with our Patreon community launch. Yes, look, have y'all been enjoying the gems, the conversations, the transparency? Baby, we've been putting our whole life on this camera. And if you have been enjoying it, we are creating an opportunity for you to partner with us because we want to be able to create at the highest level of excellence and that requires resources and that is where you come in we have created a tier as low as five dollars a month y'all five dollars five dollars if you would like to partner with us just simply click the link in the description box and we hope to see you over there so me and babe were watching social proof podcast and that's with david shans and donnie wiggins yes and a question came up that i thought was pretty cool to talk about because i feel like we fell in it a Mm. little bit and i actually want to pick your brain on it so Mm. the question is do you think it's important for men to be mindful and make sure the woman that they're pursuing is financially astute Wow, wow. Okay. Now we're not talking about no broke men. We're talking about men <laughs> that cause you can't you yeah. can't care about the woman being that and you and I yeah, But yeah. you know, someone who's doing pretty that's decent. doing pretty decent, know what yeah. credit is, know how to debt, all of yeah. those things. Do you think it matters that his woman is that way as well? Um, so I, I, I kind of can I can say that we can somewhat relate on this subject. Mm-hmm. I I'll bring it full circle, but when when TK and I first met, she was I believe you still was at your at your mom's place. Absolutely. Like, right. You was at your mom's place. She was grown, but she was she was staying there, which I that's a whole nother subject. I think that most people should stay at their mama house maybe till they get married a lot of times. <laughs> so wait, what? Like kid, you know, people that's in their twenties, early twenties, mm-hmm. you know, they always trying to get out Ooh, quick no. into the world and trying to be grown nope. too quick. And that it's was like not my goal. nah, you was like gonna be there, stack your, you know, sack your bread, yeah. do all that. That's a whole You know I got eight up for saying that? Oh yeah, by the Y'all, way. Y'all, TikTok don't yeah, like me. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is going hard. Like, TikTok does not like me. Yeah. I have so much love on Instagram, but every time I go on TikTok, people are calling me a pick me, choose me girl. Yeah. I'm like, y'all, that's my life. I yeah. did not want to go get my own apartment and go live on my own it, and like be struggling and trying to pay bills. That was not my dream. I yeah. knew I was going from my parents' house mm-hmm. to my husband's house. That's what I knew. I love it. And I believe, and that's the same thing that I want my daughters to do. I'm yeah, like, listen, you're, I'm, we're not kicking them yeah, out. We're not kicking you out the house. Unfortunately, um, and I know it's taking a different route, but I know. unfortunately, <laughs> African American, we, this is what happens on Pillow Talk of the Way, this yeah. is what happens is we bring in the bedroom right to the, to the podcast. This yeah. is what we would do but unfortunately we have this thing in african-american culture where as soon as they turn 18 you getting out the house college like that's what they we don't do know it. what they want to go and to college most, for. And i'm not saying this is everyone but for the most part i would probably say about nine nine out of ten households a lot of times it was like that yeah. I, I know it was like that in my house my mama said hey if you ain't in school whatever you gotta go that's you crazy. gotta get up out you grown 
you, you better go ahead and do what you need to do. Dang. Um, so when I no longer was going to school, which you thought I did, I jumped out quick. And then you go to these Indians and Mexican houses and uh, it'd be 50 people in there. Stack. And no shade. I no, think that's nothing, smart I as heck. Oh. We got people right around here. You're yeah. like, how many people live up in that mud? Build, building, uh, they, communities. Yeah, communities. Real estate. Shoot, they getting their money right. Yeah. Uh, shoot, I, you know, and even in our neighborhood, just to say about the, the, you know, the Indian culture, I'm seeing something where literally it's almost like they bought the whole neighborhood at the same time. They and all they all family. know each other too. <laughs> they all know each I'm other. I'm like, dang, so they know them up the street and they know each other right here. Man. They probably got- family. They probably was living in the same households. Who who knows? I'm not saying that they, but most of the times what I've seen from other cultures is they'll stay in that household. They'll stack their cash up. They'll get their credit right. They'll even go in all together on a business mm-hmm. and build that business up and won't just say, okay, now we making hundreds and thousands of dollars. Now let's go do our thing. No, they will build together a lot of times. And, and so I think that we just kick out um, our kids our kids overall, not just young girls, but kids overall, just a little bit too quick. I don't know if you want to say something before no, I kind of jump more into the story. But uh, back to, the, to you know, with TK and I. So she was coming fresh out of being in her, her mother's house. She was, you know, just turning 22, all of that. And she didn't really, she didn't really have a, know a lot about money. And myself at this time, I'm assistant manager on my way to uh, being a, a you know a full uh, man retail manager there, and I'm, I'm doing pretty decently well uh, when it came to it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> bringing her into the fold, I just want to say this because I remember hearing rumors like you had a big house, you oh had. My gosh. I remember how did that even come? I don't know. I'm like, why did why do people know your business? I don't know. I don't and know. how did it get to me? I do not know. That's a good, very good question. That's I still crazy. Don't know. You must Remember, have been. Ta- you had to tell somebody. I, I told somebody that yeah, like at that time, my sister had had moved, had moved to Houston, and they basically left their house to for me to to live. I'm in. just trying to figure out who did you tell that got to me. But go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. They, I had they to was think. like, yeah, I they puffed Namdi up. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a whole big old house, and I had some other homies that was supposed to move in, and that yeah. didn't happen, and whatever. But yeah, people knew about that. So. I'm I was sorry, doing right. I was doing pretty decent when it came to finances and you basically knew nothing about it. I mean, to the point that I remember at some time I had let you go with the, the when we first met and y'all looking at me like y'all gonna look at me crazy like he a trick but or something like but I was I let you had a credit card. So let you <laughs> let you go do what you need to do a little bit. It was it was, <laughs> don't get me wrong, she had a limit on it, but I remember at one point I had to tell her, hey, um, Pause before you go to the next place. First of all, okay, you ain't gonna put me out there. Number one, I was not you spending your money. Nandi was paying for my nails, y'all. Yeah, that's it. Definitely. <laughs> hey, I want her. Hey, I want well, her. he paid for my nails. He immediately bought me a new phone. Bought me some Beats headphones. Like you was going harder to paint a little bit, on, but like as far me as me there. just swiping your card, I was not. And I was yeah. driving, I was driving your card too, though. You was driving my card. So that's crazy. Too. You, you yeah. was tripping, babe. I, w- I was. I was like, boy, she had me. I ain't gonna lie, I was yeah, she had me gone. <laughs> I, I but I also knew being in relationships yeah. long enough, I knew in my head if if we were gonna get married. That we were gonna be married. Yes. I, I knew that from the beginning, just based off of my non negotiables, all those things. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. I knew I knew that it was some other things I needed to just make sure that you were really ready. I knew I was ready, but really like, okay, are you really ready for what we about to walk down into? But yeah. back to it. So I believe with a lot of times with most, and I will also say this. You were at um, the credit card. Yeah, so credit card doing that had to make her pause when it came to it. Um, and eventually, as time going on, I found out that you were the free spirit. Like, you you mm-hmm. kind of more of, of that. If some of you guys are have ever been through Dave Ramsey program, you may, you may know what the free spirit is. That means that she was she's more prone to actually go and shop. Not say, she, she doesn't do nothing crazy, but sometimes she just... She just goes. She's ready to just get it done. That's like, forget it. Money ain't a thing. If she's with somebody that's just like her, they probably would go and probably rack up crazy amounts of debt. But with me, <laughs> <laughs> like, like they, they probably would. And it's not saying that she's crazy irresponsible, but she's like, man, let's get it done. Like, stop worrying about it. Me, Facts. I'm thinking about numbers all the time. Yeah. Like, 
When I see something. He went out with Yoda. He was like, do it and clean up the mess later. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because he's got the same mindset as you. I bet he's He's the priest. Let's go. Clean up later. And and Yoda's, that's what our good friends, shout out to Yoda and and Gabby. That was Um, so funny. I'm like, that's literally what my mind thinks. Like, if I have a good idea, it's like $5,000. Let's do it. We'll we'll figure it out. I'm like, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, how is this going to make sense? I got to do the numbers. He needs to see how we're going to get the money back. I'm the numbers guy. Yeah, you are. That's when it comes to I'm I'm the numbers guy. Uh, But overall, I will tell you this. It, I don't believe that it matters that much because men, we're way I see things and the way I believe that the even the, uh, God would see it is that men, we are the head of the household, meaning mm-hmm. that we should also be the ones a lot of times as leading in the front when it comes to working. Like we should be the ones who a lot of times are Uh-oh. probably the breadwinners. You coming you know, for the boss lady? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with you being a. If that's how I met you, right. like if I had met you and you was making good and that's what you wanted to do, um, then I'm I'm good with that. I'm okay with that to an extent because, to be honest with you, I thought you were going to get back to working. Uh, kind of reverse. She was working when I met her. Mm-hmm. Um, she was on the track. They were asking her to go into management and all that, but then she ended up getting pregnant. Right, and so I she, was in like labor. Yeah, like I was in. What's it called? Yeah, you was like, hard, I guess, hard, hard labor. labor. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I was looking at you like, you was too pretty to be doing that. I love that job, though. It was like. And it was overnight. Yeah, you loved it. I did. So even though I took the front seat when it came to the finances, I knew that, I, I well, let me say this. I went into the relationship not thinking that I was going to be the, the main one making all the bread. Like, I had it in my mind before I met you. That um, me and whoever I end up marrying were both gonna work because I was in financial advising for a minute. I seen a lot of co- guys who were uh, were you know the the breadwinner and the wife was staying at home and they was crazy broke. They was crazy broke and we were all the solution would come down to hey here's the solution. I need more money. She gonna need to go work. Y'all gonna need to do something about that, and so I didn't want to be in that that sort of nightmare when it came to it. But I knew eventually that you would come through, um, and definitely it was an investment that eventually your career would start making some finances mm-hmm. and all of those things. And so I'm good with the man taking the lead, and also, but the woman needs to be his biggest cheerleader. Yes, his biggest cheerleader. I will tell you right now that uh, I guess. I will be what you call a high value man based off of the the Why income. You do this? Uh, the, I guess because that's wasn't that coined by I think Kevin Samuels or something. It don't matter. Rest in peace to mm-hmm. Kevin Samuels. Yeah. But uh, I believe it was coined. I guess I'm the high value man. Uh, whenever you make a, a certain amount, and I'm not saying I'm you know Babe, rich, rich stop out here. This y'all, this man. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want people to think like this man got a bunch of money. It doesn't matter, <laughs> but you are a good man and you are a yeah. high value man yeah. and you work hard and you're a great you father and you do make a certain amount of money that is considered being a high value man. So you're you don't right. have to disclaim so against I, you I'm what you that. call a high value man. There you go. Point blank period. Yes. So I'm a high value man, but I'm only that because you you push me to it. Like when I, when you met me, let's just say I was around heaven around 80, close to around 80 right. thousand a year. And, but you're chilly. And I remember the first time I had an interview that was going for a manager position and I didn't feel like I was ready. Mm. I didn't feel like, I'm like, why are they do, like, why am I doing this? Like, oh, yeah, I, I don't that. feel like yeah. I'm ready. And you yeah. was like, babe, yes, you are. You're a manager. That's who you are. Like you started to speak me and just your belief in me was like. I am. Mm-hmm. I went into that mug and I did great. It was at that first interview. I don't think it was my time just yet, but you know, a few months later, I became a full retail manager. So yeah. if your woman is gonna take the back seat, I feel like and if your a man, salary, and, yeah, huh? It grew. Yeah, and my salary grew. And yes. It continued to grow. Yes, and I believe that. And this is for the ladies. I believe that your man's next level in income is in your mouth. You can affirm him to the hundreds of thousands or you can dog him and make him feel like he's not barely doing nothing or he's not cutting it. Okay. Affirm that man daily. When y'all see her having those clips talking about, she calling me big daddy, this big man, boy. <laughs> Let me tell you, that got me steamed up. I'm like, okay. Because it's like when I step into something, I step into a situation at work or whatever. It's like, 
I got somebody who really believe in me at home. I got to make this happen. I got to go in here and kill it. I got to be the top salesman that there is because I got this woman who truly believes in me and I got to go deliver. So no, I don't have a problem. Uh, I don't, I don't have a problem with you, you know, a woman coming in, not really being as much, I guess, astute yes. alone. She's willing to learn. Well, I will also say, babe, you also have a history of finances and like being knowledgeable in that as yeah. well. So I know a lot of men will be like, heck no, nah, she need to come in, right? Like even you having a fear of me not working, someone who wasn't as educated financially as you were is going to be even more fearful. Yeah. But you had the backing and yeah. it was almost like God was giving you an opportunity to apply the knowledge that you've gained over the years because yeah. you had the knowledge, yeah. but it's like, okay, well now I know how, okay, yeah. I know how to do debt stacking. I know how to do the snowball. I know how to do, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I know how much um, we need to make. And just to say this as well, a lot of times you don't make more money just because the wife is going and leaving the home oh, because no. you have to pay for daycare. So when we ca when we added up how much it took for both of our kids to go da to daycare, both cars traveling two places a day, gas, insurance, all the maintenance on the cars. When we calculate all of that, it equaled the same. So I might as well just stay home, mm -hmm. work a business at home. And then I started getting shows and started making money through music and, you know, different gigs and stuff like that. And so it, it gave me the freedom. The beautiful thing is it, it gave me the freedom to create the opportunities for us to be free ultimately, yeah. because we, we would have just both been in the rat race. Yeah. That's it. And you I, know, and I've always fought for you because the, the, the rat race and, and being at a job has been like jail to me. Yeah. Like, don't get it wrong. It is my uh, investment partner into what we do. Yes. So my job, I started to look at my job. It's, it's my investment partner. That's how I look at my job now. But still, it's still like a jail because it holds captive a lot of times your goals and dreams. It, a lot of times it holds captive uh, those things that God really wants you to go and create. And you can't do it when you're working and giving most of your energy to someone else's nine to five job and Thanks. doing and building their dream when it comes to it. So. Yeah. So overall, I just want to say like those of you that are afraid to, I'm, I do, I, I get in some cases like you have to, you have to, but, um, so a lot of times men and women don't even try like husband and wife mm -hmm. don't even try for the wife to be at home. Just mm -hmm. see, you know, do a little three, four five month experiment and, yeah. and see what can happen. But like you said, it also requires the woman building up her man and, and y'all praying and your man going out after opportunities that he can, um, you know, grow and, and gain more salary and mm -hmm. all of those different type of things. But yeah, I, I knew, I knew I wasn't going to work at least the first two, First year or the second year. And we had that agreement. Yes. I Like when I got pregnant, I was like, I elite, I, don't, I can't send my kid to school when she's three months. Can't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't know nothing. So I said, give me like a year or two. And mm -hmm. then the year after I had another baby. Yeah. And <laughs> so, then it was like, all right. Like, well, okay. So at that point I had been home for t t three years because yeah. I was pregnant for nine months, had a baby. That was one year. So that's almost two years. Pregnant again, nine months. That's three years. The other baby. So yeah, mm -hmm. four years. It's like you started making more money. Yeah. And we had to step out really on faith. Yes. To be honest with you, because it wasn't what we planned. It wasn't what we wanted to do. I remember uh, working with this guy uh, and he was a manager at one of the stores. And it was, yeah, I remember it's Blaine actually. Uh, and Blaine, he was, he he was the breadwinner. He was the only one working. His wife was a stay at home. And this is before I even met you or anything. I'm like, bro, how do you do that? He was just like, you just do it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I mean, yeah. you just, you know, you just go ahead and you just, you do it and then it, you it just make out. it happen. Yeah. And that's literally what happened with us is no, that I started doing it. And then I was like, wow, God, you took care of all of our needs. And you're and then, making more money. And actually, making it actually <laughs> helped out more because yes. we would have been you trying to go, who gonna pick up the kids and yes, be frustrated? My then God. how about dinner for an audit? Man, it worked out so great. Jesus. I came home. House it clean. was house clean. You make food. You, you keep. Oh my gosh, you make a house feel like a home so much. Food I, ready. So thank God, food was ready. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kids, kids was good at home. Nurtured. Yeah, nurtured. They see their mom. They get to see their mom. Yeah, uh, that was so, a big deal, and I know yeah. this is way off. Yeah, but, but it, it this might be isn't. for somebody. That it kind of really... isn't at the same time. Yeah. Like y'all, I do not. I mean, like the the nurturing that our kids are so 
loved. I yeah. was going to say spoiled, but no, they are loved. Really loved. Like the, yeah. the, the amount of attention and time that in, in, um, quality time that we've had with our kids to just go in the, on the deck and sit yeah. outside with them and be in the backyard. And not be, especially once you started working from home, yeah. we've just, we've been like this since you've been working from really home. COVID. Yeah. yeah. Since COVID. Since so COVID. overall, yeah, I think it takes a, I, you, you got to actually have faith though. Like you really mm-hmm. got to be rocking with God to do something. It was a, it was a bold move, but it was the best move we could have made. And yeah. yeah, I definitely wasn't aware financially of mm-hmm. anything. I never paid a bill in my life, mm-hmm. literally yeah. not a phone yeah. bill, not a nothing. And so <laughs> I knew yeah. like either you're going to have to teach me or you got to be okay with me just not knowing. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got our, our, our we it's, what works for y'all works for y'all. Yeah. Point blank period. We're not saying that we're not generalizing this, saying that this this is for everybody no. or whatever. I believe that it's probably the most optimal for most relationships. Uh, it shows, I think it was over 65% or so of married uh, married women that are working would like to be at home if they, if they could. Mm-hmm. So keep that, you know, think about that. That may help you guys out. Uh, but what do you guys think about this? I mean, do you think that a woman needs to be on the same level, especially if you're a high value man? I love to hear what do you think? Do a woman need to come in, make it the same money as you or not? Women, what do y'all think about it? Please let us know in the comments below. Ladies, I have released my new ebook, Unleashing Your Inner Strength, The Woman's Guide to Setting and Enforcing Boundaries Like a Boss. This is a book for every woman that feels like they have a seed on the inside side, that you are called to do something, that you're assigned to do something. There's a ministry on the inside, a book on the inside, a business on the inside. But a lot of times we often fail because we do not know how to protect that thing. We do not know how to keep that seed in the right environment. So if you are that woman, this is the book for you. And did I say free? Yes, ma'am, I did. So I need you to go ahead and grab that book as well as know when you get the book that you are including your Yourself in my sisterhood, a group of women that are going to be intentional about growing and evolving and more than anything, become all that God has called you to be. If you would love to be a part of that, if you would love to be connected, I need you to go ahead and click that link in the description box. I cannot wait to grow with you. It's time for the aha moment of the week. Yes. Hey, listen, aha moment is just, we want to bring you along because we're growing. We want you guys to grow too. So something that we got that is like a light bulb that went off in our head, we want to share it with you guys in hopes that it would also motivate you and help you in that area too. And so recently I've been reading a book uh, by Dr. Darius Daniels called Your Purpose is, Is Calling. Um, and it's really great. It's a great book. I definitely uh, would you know, tell you to go grab this book. And he was talking about a part in here about agitation. He said, the problems that agitate you the most are more than likely the problems you were created to solve. He said, you were built with unique features and what our society labels as rough edges and actually tools intended to help you make an impact in the world. Um, one of the other quotes, he said, I want you to understand that aggravation, the aggravation you feel at the wrongness of the world is often a direct function of the way you were created. It's part of who you are. Again, the problems that agitate you the most are more than likely the problems you were created to solve. Hmm. So that just made me think the, the aha moment was your agitation holds your destination, Mm -hmm. right? Like it just made me think of how. There are certain things that I get agitated about that not everybody else does. Facts. Like it is your your creative design. I remember at one time when before I got on a praise team at a church, there was something about it. I can't remember what it was that agitated me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember a brother coming up to me and he and I was talking to him about it. He said, well, he said, I think maybe that's the reason why you're supposed to be up there. Mm. And that's before I had joined. I had been with this church probably almost well, a couple of years. You. Uh, it was. It might have been something about maybe how they were singing or the energy. I'm men. big, yeah, men and energy. Mm-hmm. Like I am big on men giving praise. Mm-hmm. Like throw your hands up. Like if you went to Drake's or anything, like you go to a concert. Most time, men are strip just clubs. like shoo strip okay. club. You excited? You riled up? You kicking it? Yeah. All of that. Yeah. But when we talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and all of that, you can't even throw your hands up. You sitting there? Yeah. When he said the he said, uh, listen, y'all be silent, the rocks will cry out. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna let the rock like come on. You can't just put your hands up. Yeah. You can't just even like just 
Don't do nothing. Just at least do that. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the Chiefs game or you watching um, whatever, basketball, you riled up, you pump. Drake come in town. Uh, Lou, Drake. Uzi Verts and all these other. I don't think men jumping for them, baby. Baby, they be not saying they jumping, but they <laughs> they riled up. And you yeah. talking, no, no, hey, yeah, hey, uh, But you talking about your savior? <laughs> That agitates me. Yeah. So I'm big on energy when yeah. it comes to worship. Yeah. Why are y'all just standing there dead? <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, why are y'all standing there dead? And then also I'm big on even like the sound when it comes to it and things of that sort. Like, what? if Drake and them stuff, if they production is going to be dope. That's why, hey, man, you know, I know some people uh, have been on his head lately uh, with Mike Todd or whatever. But you go to Mike Todd Church, they praise mm -hmm. and worship is like, whoa. And I love it. Yeah. That's our Lord and Savior that we're talking about. Yeah. I get agitated about worship, especially yeah. for men. Get your butt up to the front. Put your hands up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get, hey, let's go. We're talking about he died for us. We should be dead in his place. Instead, he took ours. Mm. Like, it was on a cross. Like, what are you, like, it gets me agitated. So obviously there is a purpose behind that. And that's why I've been serving on a worship team yeah. for, for quite a moment. I get another agitation of mine is mothers not co-parenting with fathers. My God. That hits home with me. Yeah. Like, because I had grew up seeing my mother and father have a co-parent relationship my whole life. Never was together, yeah. but never had an issue. I never heard my mama speak ill of my dad. Right. And uh, my dad speak ill of my mom. Yeah. She say, Hey, Nomni need this. He going into school. Can you send me about this much? Yeah. Money was sent. Okay. It wasn't a bunch of fighting and fussing. It wasn't a bunch of, hey, mama, Running when I'm going to my daddy's? To no, my mama actually said, hey, do you want to go live with your daddy for a little bit? Right. You could live with him. I lived with my daddy for about three years. Yeah. Okay? Because my mother knew how to co-parent. Well, yeah. now a lot of times the story that I'm hearing from a lot of men is, oh, she playing around with the child. Yeah, she got mad at me. She wasn't letting me see him. What? Yep. We're time. talking about the child needs you and the mama. Like, what are we talking about? She's not co-parenting. And then I see people on Father's Day celebrating mothers. Okay, happy Father's Day to whatever. Huh? For her? No, no, no. She could try her best. Listen, my mother could try her best. She could not be my daddy. Yeah. You, I know you holding it down on both fronts. Don't get it wrong. I'm not, I'm not minimizing that. But at the end of the day, you can never be what his father would be to him. And I know that this is a special agitation. I know I'm created to do something about it. And I got things and plans in mind about it. I know I'm playing on because this is, this doesn't hit for every father. I was just talking to uh, somebody here recently, a brother, and he's going through something with his child. Right. And he's like, yeah, man, she's, she's playing about me seeing the child and, and all of this. And so I give him, I start, I get passionate. I'm like, well, man, listen, this is what you go do. Your joint custody agreement, man. She keep doing this. This is what you do. You do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. He is like, well, shoot, man, I'll be honest with you. I ain't really tripping. I've, I've, I've attempted. So I'm cool. I was like, I was like, oh, I had went on and I had got fired up. I'm thinking that he just as frustrated as me. And he like, some men don't care. Yeah, they like, sure. oh, well, I attempted to see the child. So, I mean, my excuse to everybody would be this, and I'm just like, and them was, are the ones the baby mama be trying to get the daddy to see him. Yeah, and it's I, the ones that don't care. Yeah, <laughs> and I was telling, I was telling, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, well, you know, because we was talking about a little girl. I was just like, man, you know, she's only like this. She's let's just say she's under ten, mm. and I'm like, man, these this is critical moments, man. Yeah. And when she gets to this age and she hasn't had you, then she starts to fill in that void of a father. She starts to build it in with a with a young boy, start doing some things that she shouldn't be doing with that young with that young boy in her teenage years and all of that. I've yeah. seen evidence of this. It agitates my soul. So I I just wonder what it is that agitates you guys. Like, babe, I know there's some things that. You get agitated about like share with the people what's one of your agitations that you know you was created to that your destination is within. I'm agitated about everything. Give us, <laughs> give us, give us one, baby. My baby, my, my wife don't play. When she get agitated, she go hard, and I love it. Yeah, solution mode. That's what I I, mm. I, I get into solving. That's yeah. immediately when I see problems, I'm like, all right, let's let's figure out how we can make this happen. Um, worship teams is a big one for me. Mm. Um, sound excellence. I yes. don't I, church in general, yeah. and I'm going to be brief on this. I can, yeah. I do not think just because we love God that we should not operate in excellence. Wow. 
I do not think just because we are a church that we should not have order, Mm -hmm. that people that you hire, especially, Mm -hmm. and volunteers, shoot, but especially if people are on payroll, that can can just show up, be late, be sloppy, no, uh, nothing. You know, Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think that I... It, I, I know that I'm called to bring like the business and the spirit together. Like mm. I do know that because it, you can't do one without the other. You can't just be business minded because then you're not letting the Holy spirit do his thing. And, or, uh, um, you're not letting spontaneous moments happen when the Lord wants to deliver, but you can't just be so overly spiritual that you also in church for eight hours and <laughs> there's no structure and yeah. there's no form. And so that's probably a big one for me. Just ra- the raggliness and how like mm-hmm. I'll be in, you know, that some places that we visited, we'll be there just like, what in the world? Yeah. It, people just able to come from the crowd and yeah. and speak a word over yeah. somebody out loud just, and just grab the mic. Order is just all over the place and yeah. it's it's disrespectful. Very like disrespectful. we'll sit there and be like, this is not okay. Yeah. Like that's that should not happen. And not in a, you know, you got to be a priest to do yeah. like not in that way, but like yeah. just order. When you go to your job, there's I mean for the most part there's yeah. order. So that's one. Um, church in general. Praise team, worship, admin stuff in general. Um, Another one, I think uh, it probably falls into Christianity and church again, but like people just dropping people is a big Mm. deal for me. I cannot stand when we get to places where we've like, we're not in like, you know how you're in bondage mm-hmm. and when you're hungry for the Lord, you treat people a little different. Oh, yeah. Then you get to a place where you got a little more money. You got your crew, you got your people. <laughs> you don't, you kind of start caring less. Mm. Now, obviously this is not everyone, but I can't stand those type of people. I can't stand those type of situations where, you know, we forget that, especially it, when we're talking about church, right? Let's say, mm-hmm. or, or any type of Christian business where we are funded in a way, mm-hmm. the people that are broken and that need you, most times are what funded you and we get to a place where we're hungry in the beginning. We see this all the time, Mm -hmm. like Christian rappers, Christian singers, gospel people where they were hungry. I mean, you can think about some, like they were hungry when they were Mm -hmm. worshiping, they are Mm -hmm. worship leaders and they were hungry. Then they got money. And now you want to do R and B. Now you want to be this Mm -hmm. and you stop caring so much. Start bending the rules a little bit. Start bending the rules. You start making the scripture kind of fit your own. For your own crowd and your own people. And oh, you you know somebody that's in a polygamous relationship. So you don't talk about polygamy no more. So like all of that kind of entwined in one, like dropping people, bending rules because now you're at a certain level and and not standing on principles is a big Mm -hmm. agitation. And just like Mm -hmm. women, women in general, like, I think I, I think I'm agitated by the delusion that our culture is creating for women, mm-hmm. um, that we are a prize no matter how full of filth, traumatic, ma- how we mm-hmm. emasculate our men, how we just that whole culture is an agitation for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I can keep going. I mean, yeah, we could go for a minute. As you can see, though, we are super agitated. Married by couples, married couples mm-hmm. that do no work in their mm-hmm. marriages and expect to thrive. Wow. Married couples no who dates. no dates, no counseling, what? don't go to church, not invested, no community, no accountability. Y'all having boring sex because mm. nobody's talking, no communication, just literally going through life with no type of structure mm. in your marriage. That's yeah. another agitation yeah, for me as yeah. well. As you can see, we we agree on uh, a good amount of our agitations and I, I praise God, thank God, and I hope you guys too who are married are with somebody that's agitated about some of the same things because you guys can do kingdom work together yes like we're here to do that work together i when i look at things i'm like god you so cold you set me up with the woman who 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 need who i needed to go do the work that you needed done oh yeah like you you set it up and i didn't even see it like that all i saw is that she was fine she had that shape everything like i didn't even know i was getting set up and we get agitated we both when we sit up there with worship and it's not like hold on whoa 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 whoa. what i can't hear that hey let's somebody turn the mic now okay somebody come go Okay, somebody come get the baby. Somebody go get the baby. Can you turn that light? Somebody just like, hey, hey, we got you. You know, you could just get the baby that's screaming in the back. Y'all no, somebody just y'all don't hear that baby. Yeah, somebody just do something. Yeah. Like, okay, pastor stuff is out. Can, can somebody hurry up and get over there? 
Like, I, I'm like almost wanting to jump out of my seat. Like, hey, 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 listen. Hey, hey honey, how you doing? Hey, so can you go over there and, and yeah. can you do that? Like, or hey, be, baby, <laughs> let me see the baby girl. I'll take her. Hey, you're an usher. Can you can you smile a little bit? Oh. Like, can you? <laughs> we saw. Hold on, we got to tell this story. <laughs> this is a quick story, y'all. So we visited this church. This church, let's just say that. And we're excited. You know, we we walking mm. through. Um, it was a particular reason why we went here or whatever mm-hmm. we knew what we were going for we had yeah. in mind what we were going to get um and we're walking in and i'm like noticing there's this kind of theme i'm like okay mm-hmm. I, okay she don't smile mm. okay he got a suit on you know clean looking brother yeah. clean looking couple they they greet no smile yeah. she wasn't friendly Nobody. so we happened to um and they're a pretty big church pretty big church i happened to bump into one of the leaders Whoa, um, me. of the worship leader, mm-hmm. one of the worship leaders. And I, I was like, oh, my gosh, phenomenal voice. Praise God. Like, bless. when I tell you all this person act like I did not talk like you was standing right next to her. I was literally right. We were it was a, I was right next to this person. <laughs> so it was, it was very clear that I was speaking to this person. And I kind of sat there stuck like that. I felt disrespected. I'm like. I wanted to say, you so you didn't hear me just compliment yeah. you. I mean, put on their makeup and walked right out as if wow. I did not say a word to them. Wow. And so another agitation that I think we common ha- it have because of a common hurt is mm. church Christians, believers having zero love for people. Love for people is big. Love for people is a huge thing for us. Like y'all operating because that's a it's a church that's of good. excellence. Right, mm. so that's why we say you can't do one without the other. Yeah, it's a tr- the the place that we visit is a church of excellence for sure. Yes, but the love is missing a hundred percent. I don't think mm. I saw one usher smile. Nah, I don't remember see seeing one. Well, no, at the very at the very the front, first lady, very yes. front, outside, very front, yes. yeah, people they are. But the rest, Inside? Were, yeah, they were. They, it wasn't. It wasn't none of that. It type was like, of spirit. yeah, it was just off. It was kind of weird it to was. me. It was very, very. You know, we like. Yeah. You know, me and Naughty are very, you know, yeah. just ready to come in. It's like, oh, y'all don't, oh, yeah. y'all don't smile in here. My bad. Yeah. I, I thought this was about Jesus. I thought we was yeah. about to worship <laughs> together and like talk about the yeah. Heavenly Father. And so that's the agitation, which yeah. not even just like not, but that's a part of like structure too. Yeah. Like when we sit down with our leaders, it's like, hey, when y'all greeting people, smile. Good morning. How are yeah. you doing? Welcome uh, in. So glad that you're here. Yeah. Yes, go right over there. You need some tissue? No, sure. Fine. That's great. Yeah. Like, have an upbeatness yeah. about you. Yeah. We're that same way. If we go in a T-Mobile store and people don't greet oh, us, yeah. we like, oh, yeah. y'all going to say we, hello? So we big on overall ser- like serving. service, serving. Yes. The way that you serve yes. overall is yes. a big impact. If I step into your stores and you're not, hey, welcome in. We'll be with you in just a moment. You're yeah. not checking in. All of that. That's why when I was in retail, I kept was every, every month I was winning customer awards. You can every go see month. if you know me on Facebook, you can go see reward after reward for customer service. We're about service and how do you yeah. serve people? How do you do? serve with a loving and caring heart Ooh. that is so, so I think that's big. the thing. I think that's the common thing is how are we serving each other? Yes. Husband and wives, yeah. how are we serving one another? Pastors to leaders, how y'all, how's the pastor serving his leaders? How's the pastor serving congregation? Yeah. Like it's the same concept of serving. It is. It, it, and, and, and Jesus said that. He said, the greatest among these should be a ser- first yes. off serving. Yes. Like we should be serving. So that's that's very big, man. And so that's something, as you can see, yeah. it agitates the heck out of us. Y'all be praying for us. Maybe it's something that God wants us to go into it's as far maybe as. maybe we are. No, it is. Matter yeah. of fact, that's right. Um, that, that we go into because that's our agitation. So I say that, man, uh, your agitation holds your destination. What yeah. just, what gets you riled up? Yeah. Maybe something that we said, it gets you riled up too. Our podcast was built out of agitation, oh, just about sure. just <laughs> marriages and how all, Ooh, just love beginning? is not shown for certain people. Certain My people God. are just left astray and nobody really gives a dang or whatever. Like we get agitated and pumped up. What gets you pumped up that like when you tell somebody else, they just be like, oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there that means, oh. You. It was you. Mm-hmm. It's you that's supposed to go do that thing. It's us that's supposed to go do a certain thing. We doing it right now when you listening to us, man. So I just, I say, your agitation holds your destination. Figure out what that is. Hey, if that's you, I want to know. In the comments, let us know what's something that agitates you that you just know that you need to go do. Maybe you're not moving on it. Maybe you need some prayer. Let us know. We want to pray with you yes. on that thing. 
Let us know what's your agitation. Yeah, man, that is it, baby. That wraps it up. <laughs> that is it. Hey, listen, a couple different things when it comes to it. Um, yeah. first off, if y'all don't know, my baby, she has a free ebook. Ladies, mm -hmm. y'all must, y'all need. The ad to. is gonna be dropped, actually. Yeah. Okay. Within yes. within this. Okay. Y'all, sure. hold on. Comment <laughs> for the ads. Yeah. Okay, we're growing. We're growing. Because <laughs> we that's. Comment because it's yeah it's it's going up and yes. we're super duper excited for all that God is doing through yeah. us. When we say we're growing, if it's not growing, what is it doing, baby? It's dying. So we're growing, yeah. and I I pray that you see that that is evident. But yeah, the ad will be in this video. Yeah, man, the so. ad will be in. in minutes. So hey, listen, if you made it to the end, we thank you. Man. Yeah. Take action on different couple ads that we have put in yes. there. We thank you. Like, subscribe, do all of those things. Share with someone Let's out there. Let's talk about the Patreon though. I do um, want to talk about that real quick. Yeah, just okay. very, very quickly. So, so those that are watching, those that are listening right now, um, you heard the ad about the Patreon. Um, I know a lot of people might not even know what that is. So this mm -hmm. is just a, a system that yeah. you guys can help and partner with us. Those that love what we do, those that feel our hearts. Yeah. You know, every time I get we get on live, we go live spontaneously. Mm -hmm. We're like, y'all, yeah. can y'all see that we're like actually genuine people and really want the oh, best yeah. for everyone that is assigned to us. Yeah. I mean, everyone in general, but especially yeah. those that are locked in with us. But these things take resources, better lighting, yeah. multiple camera angles. So our shows can get better, yeah. better studio equipment. Equipment, all of these things, being able to get and invest in ourselves to be better yeah. speakers, to be able to yeah. just get more people on the show that y'all might want to hear of. These yeah. people charge to get on their show. So yeah. all of these things take resources, y'all. Like you heard in the ad, the lowest tier is $5. Y'all spend that on yeah. fries, <laughs> chips, chicken, oh, Starbucks. Boy. My Starbucks drinks is almost $8. And you can be giving that to the kingdom. Yeah. So don't think of just our faces, by the way. Like, yeah. don't just think of Nambi and TK. This is the kingdom that you are helping just like yes. you sold your church this is the same thing we're not about to ball out and be pulling up and crazy stuff we're building you know what yeah. i'm saying like we're building and so yeah. please partner with us and i just want to put this personalized message for oh. those that are listening and watching because we really out mm -hmm. here trying our best y'all like right now we're yeah. recording in our home while our kids are at school and just trying to get it done um yeah. because we are what we wish we had yeah really so please go ahead partner with us yeah. uh, i believe that we sow into a lot of different things yes uh, we don't really watch where our money goes we sow into subscription services mm -hmm. like our app to watch our favorite show and all those things man how about you sow into something that's kingdom yes. okay we're not perfect people or anything like that but i believe that we are really helping people we have a lot of people inboxing us mm -hmm. and we need resources to even be able to help other people the way they need to be helped because yes. God sent them to us yeah, we have for a reason. So we don't want to push them away because we don't know how somebody overflow. else might, might handle them. So, yeah. hey, please help yeah, I just want to say to that, story, like for the people that inbox us, like we have an overflow of amount of DMs <sighs> that takes people being able to respond, being able to get them connected to us. Like yeah. all of this stuff, y'all, it's not free. Yeah. Like it's just it's not everything we do costs something yeah. um and we're going to another level here in a few weeks that y'all will see it costs money to do that yes. like it's, it's resources that um and it took us a while to get to this point yeah. like to be asking to be um creating an opportunity for y'all to partner but yeah. it's not look closed mouths don't get fed number one yeah. and we also know our hearts yeah. and those that have any type of discernment can feel that as well so yeah if you feel led pulled in any way um Definitely make sure you get get the well if they're listening. Yeah, the link is in the, the link but is right listening. there in the bio. Oh, it's gonna be in the, the link is gonna be in the in there too. Um, okay. Yeah, you podcast. got the link right there on whatever your your podcast. It should also be there too. If not, yeah. find us uh on on the Instagram yes. and all those things. It will somewhere be in our yes, link tree. You'll find it. You'll be able to to find it. Yes. Yeah. All right. That wraps up our show. We thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, do all those things there. Share this with somebody. But until we see you again, God bless you. We love you, and we'll holler at you. Peace. Hey, thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you could do us a huge favor, please hit that like button and please subscribe. Yes, and please do not forget to hit that notification bell. We need y'all to be locked in every single time we drop this fire content. Yes. Also, we need y'all to follow us on all social media platforms at the Iwebus. And look, we will see y'all on the next video. Holla. <laughs>